number one comic character of all time, Popeye the Sailor, he said it best when he said, I am who I am, and I am. I were uh, reminiscing about when we were, or when I was a little kid, myself and my two uh, older brothers down here at the camp, uh, and what it was like for her and my father and three <laughs> uh, little boys to stay in a 14 by 14 one room cabin. Uh, and uh, here's, a, here's a little bit of her uh, memories of back then. Well, I think it was about 61 years ago and um, it was a great place to bring three boys I show everybody this very cool uh, postcard. <laughs> Tables turned. Uh, looks like a deer driving it, and uh, he bagged himself a hunter. Uh, deer must be doing pretty well for himself. Uh, looks like a Lincoln Continental, uh, I think, uh, convertible there. And uh, it's kind of funny, but it's uh, also very, very true. Uh, if deer were hunting us, we'd be in a lot of trouble. It's been, uh, it's been pretty cold lately. Had some real cold nights lately. And uh, um, I'm going to show you just how cold it got the other night. Uh, um, got oil lamps up here at camp. And uh, some of them I use kerosene. But uh, some of them I just use uh, a, uh, a lamp oil in. And uh, this is... Uh, smokeless and odorless uh, lamp oil and uh, it got so cold inside the camp the <laughs> that the uh, liquid uh, lamp oil is now a solid <laughs> froze solid so the mother of all wingbone turkey calls I want to show everybody check this one out here just look at the size of the bones in this wingbone call this is an average turkey, and you can only imagine how big the turkey was that these bones came from here. A little update uh, from our friend Dino and uh, his cord wood construction. It's coming along great. Great job, Dino. Can't wait to see, see it all finished up. Many, many, many years ago, I made this gun from a, from a kit. It's uh, CVA is the name of the company, uh, Connecticut Valley Arms. It's a 12-gauge double-barrel percussion black powder uh, shotgun. And I'm thinking of that, uh, that paper wasp uh, nest out for some wadding on it and see how it patterns with that. I was out the other day and I, uh, I found a, a uh, I call them paper wasp uh, nest. And I guess I should have acted a little quicker and getting it down because uh, it looks like the birds or whatever got at it first. But I think there's enough in it uh, for what I want to try. Uh, paper wasp nests uh, get abandoned in the fall, so I'm not disturbing any, uh, any wasps. It's... Uh, mid-March right now, so that the nest is, is not being used at all, and it won't be reused, so uh, I'm going to try to get it down with this pole saw. Yep.
Rawhide is uh, kind of like the mountain man's version of duct tape. Uh-oh, I, I think I'm being held up. Yeah, what do you want? What do you want? Give me all your videos. <laughs> hey, Kevin, how you doing? I thought for a minute I was being held up. Let, Hi, how you doing? Let me get my mask on. Hang on a minute. <laughs> what brings you by today? Well, I stumbled upon some more rusty gold. Oh, I know man. you like the rusty stuff, so what do you think of that? <laughs> That's a good one. So, I like that one. At, at that point... I decided archery had too many drawbacks. <laughs> That's a good one, man. Well, everybody, Mark from Florida, let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs>Mark and I just uh, finished uh, videoing uh, some more clips for the fly casting video that's uh, in production right now and should be out soon. So we're having a little uh, fun afterwards uh, fishing. I'm fishing with my, my spinning rod. Mark's fishing with his fly rod. Got here, it's an imitation of a leech, and I got some rattles in there for extra attraction, and it helps it to sink down sometimes where the fish are subsurface, and uh, it's very effective.
I'm using uh, Hawk Spinner on a Captain Bob's, uh, Steve over Captain Bob's Lures uh, Hawk Spinner. So we got the Hawk Spinner against Mark's uh, homemade leech lure there. With the uh, upcoming uh, archery season, I made some new arrows here. Um, these are uh, cedar shafts, but I made them in a primitive fashion. Uh, wild turkey fe feathers for fletching. Uh, they're tied on with backstrap sinew from a deer. Self-knock arrows, uh, which means that there's no plastic knock on them, that they're just uh, the knock is, is cut right into the shaft. Uh, I still need to put some points on these arrows, uh, but I'm gonna take them hunting this year and, and hopefully uh, I get an opportunity to harvest a deer with them. Uh, as far as arrows go, uh, uh, I'm fortunate uh, with the archery club I belong to, to uh, have met and become friends with a fellow by the name of Jerry Lee. Jerry Lee's out of Canada, uh, and he's a member of our archery club. And uh, Jerry is what they call a fletcher, a fletcher of arrows. Uh, so he makes arrows, uh, and uh, that's kind of his specialty. Now, Jerry doesn't necessarily make hunting arrows. What Jerry makes is uh, re reproductions of medieval war arrows. And uh, I wanted to show everybody a, a couple of examples of them. Uh, here's, here's one. Uh, I believe it's a poplar shaft, uh, very long fletchings, and you can see where he uh, has tied the fletching on with silk thread. Absolutely beautiful. The spacing and everything is absolutely beautiful. Uh, like like my, my arrows, it, uh, he also has self knocks on them, which uh, the, the knock is cut right into the arrow shaft, but he has reinforced his uh, not only with the silk wrapping, but also with a, uh, a, a piece of uh, wood in here, inserted in there. Now, um, his arrows are, are not for hunting game here, uh, but they are uh, reproduction medieval war arrows. And I just wanted to show them to everybody. Now the point uh, on this particular arrow was made by a blacksmith out of Michigan by the name of Carl. And Carl is quite a talented guy. Um, you can see by this work, it's all hand forged. Uh, very, very, very nice work. Uh, now Carl, not only is he a, a blacksmith, but he also uh, is a flint napper. And he, uh, he napped me this point here, this arrow point. Uh, uh, within a few minutes, he napped this from a stone that he picked up uh, while we were camping one time. And uh, I just wanted to show it to everybody. Uh, and uh, again, uh, Carl is quite the craftsman. And uh, I'm very proud to have an example of Jerry's uh, work hanging on my wall. Here's another one of Jerry's arrows, a little different uh, color combination. But as you can see here, it's just absolutely uh, uh, top-notch craftsman. Uh, so um, thank you, Jerry. Thank you for, for your friendship and thank you for uh, um, your inspiration uh, as a Fletcher of Arrows. hemlocks here started out as two individual trees and they were growing so close to each other that they intertwined and now they're one um, I think the term for these type trees is lover trees um, and uh, these have been growing here for quite a while 
There's several other examples you can find in the woods up here. And uh, I just thought they were kind of cool. Thought I'd show everybody. I'm a bit of a garbage picker, uh, and uh, I come from a long line of uh, garbage pickers, <laughs> and uh, I guess I'm proud of the fact that I'm a garbage picker or uh, a recycler. I guess that's a, a better term. Um, well, I wanted to show everybody my garbage pick of the week, the treasure that I found curbside the other day I'm driving down the road and out of the corner of my eye I see this beautiful mounted fish leaning against someone's trash can I ran into our friend uh, hole in the boat Chuck at the Bone Creek Rendezvous and uh, Chuck has been busy. He's making some bows this winter, and I picked this one up here. Shoots beautiful. I'd like to thank everybody for being patient with the sound quality on this channel. I know it's not very good. I'm working on it. I'm looking into it. Uh, I had a, somebody make a suggestion about getting a uh, lapel uh, microphone. Uh, so I have to look up and find out what a lapel is first. I had a surprise catch this morning when I was out fishing. Uh, I was fishing with some shiners under a bobber. And... Uh, that bobber went under. I mean, it went under, dove under. And I set the hook, and boy, oh boy, I knew I had, I knew I had something big on there. Let me tell you, the old ugly stick is bent over. Now, uh, Superman's got kryptonite Popeye's got Brutus uh, <laughs> now I'm not comparing myself to either Popeye or Superman uh, those guys are in a class all by themselves but uh, everybody's got their arch enemy and uh, my arch enemy here is uh, this little corner of the pond <laughs> I've lost uh, countless lures in this corner of the pond and I'm back again with a brand new jitterbug from over at the bait and tackle shop uh, and uh, I'm hoping I don't lose it hope I catch a fish well which one do you want first the good news or the bad news the good news is I still got my lure the bad news is I didn't catch any bass back there I'd like to give a fishing shout out to uh, Jason. Jason and this uh, beautiful, beautiful pike that he caught. Nothing like a hamburger out on the grill. I hope you were not uh, uh, too hungry because we got a little bit of a problem here. The uh, grill fell off the table 
And under all that hot charcoal there on the ground is uh, is our our hamburgers. Um, luckily, I got out of the way just in time, or else uh, I think I could have had some serious burns. So sorry about that, everybody. Guess we'll have to go to Plan B. Well, that <laughs> didn't turn out the way I expected it to. Um, you know this cooking, this cooking, uh, yeah, is harder than it looks. You know. Um, so anyhow, I, uh, I think, uh, I think I got some. Uh, uh, well, I don't have much, but uh, I think we can rustle up something. Maybe uh, some potato chips, or uh, well, we still got the rolls. So we can have those. Uh, how about a ketchup sandwich? How's that sound? You know, uh, different folks collect different things. Uh, and one of the things I collect, and God only knows why I collect them, is axes. I've got enough axes for the next thousand years. <laughs> but I can't pass them up. And I got this really cool one uh, that I just acquired uh, for the collection. It is uh, very old. I'd say it's probably 100 years old or more. Um, and it's got a, uh, a stamp, stamped right in the, in the head of the axe. It says, Buffalo Black Axe Hand Forged Buffalo Wholesale Hardware Company, Buffalo, New York. It's a pretty cool little axe. Uh, my favorite, favorite places to stop by is Captain Bob's Outdoors. And uh, here's a little look at the inside of Captain Bob's Outdoor Store. Guys, fish on. You know, uh, often uh, fishermen overlook uh, spots like this. This is in a little uh, town park here. You can see there's a <laughs> little fountain in the middle of the in the middle of the pond, and uh, yeah, the size of this big old bluegill that came out of this little pond, uh, and a worm, and a bobber, and a cane pole. So uh, don't overlook these spots. These spots uh, can be very productive. The best part about trail cameras is uh, you never know what you're going to catch on them. And just when you think you've seen it all, you think you know every critter in the woods, something new comes along and the camera captures it. Check out this critter here. I sure hope I never run into him.
I was driving down Main Street just past Captain Bob's uh, outdoor store and I had to do a double take. I'm driving along and I see this scarecrow and I had to stop and take a picture for everybody and show everybody. Evidently um, the hollow there has a um, annual scarecrow contest and they've got them all decorated up and down Main Street. Uh, pretty cool. But this one really caught my eye. Uh, it's a prize winner. It, it won second prize in the contest. Uh, had I been a judge, it would have won first prize. Uh, anyhow, check out this scarecrow. He's got a Zebco reel. He's got a net, his fishing vest, and his fishing hat. I thought it was really cool. So I wanted to show everybody. In the uh, one buckskins and bows video, I was kidding around a little bit about uh, using uh, my self bow as a fishing pole. Well, I, I got thinking about it, and being that it's kind of a rainy day to go bow hunting, I thought maybe I'd give it a try. I got a, about six foot of linen cord here, and I got a little stick as a bobber. Here's the hook I'm using. Turns out that hole in the bow chuck makes uh, not only a great bow, but a pretty darn good fishing pole. Check out this beautiful woodland bass that I caught uh, using one of Chuck's uh, fishing poles. That woodland bass is so big, I think I'm going to need a bigger frying pan. Uh, uh, big hemlocks fall down and uh, they're laying across the creek. And normally I just let nature take its course with things and, you know, uh, just leave it alone. But uh, there's several branches that are laying down into the creek and I'm afraid it's going to catch debris when uh, we have storms and stuff. And I'm just a little concerned uh, that it might back up and flood behind it. Um, so I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna cut some of them branches off, just a few, just so that uh, the water can continue to, to flow through there. Uh, and the, the saw I'm gonna use is kind of a cool little pack saw here. Uh, let, me, let me show it to you.
absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's one of the things that I enjoy about the magazine is getting it and seeing what artwork they have on the cover. Um, now I save all these uh, fur fishing games and I've saved them for years and I literally have hundreds of them uh, stacked away in boxes and from time to time I, I get them out, I look up different stuff, especially in the winter months. Uh, I spend some time, I go back and read things. I'm always learning something from them. They're great, like I said, it's a great resource. Um, but it's kind of a shame to have all that, all them beautiful uh, paintings um, tucked away in a box. So I decided to take some of them. And if my math is correct, I needed about 75 or so. Um, cut off the covers and I'm going to use them for wallpaper in the uh, bathroom up here at the cabin. Check out what I found in the wood pile the other day. A northern ring neck snake. First time I ever saw one. Um, I guess they're kind of common, but uh, they're very secretive and they're nocturnal. So uh, I thought it was pretty cool. Here's a picture of the snake. The uh, last time I was out uh, on my, my little archery 3D course here, I um, discovered a turkey target, a uh, little walking turkey target uh, that was knocked over. The stakes were pulled out of the ground, uh, um, and it was laying on its side. Well, today I went back out on the range, and I found one of my deer targets actually knocked over, snapped the legs of it and they had uh, bent the, the little inserts that hold it onto the rebar so uh, whatever hit it was pretty good size uh, not sure uh, what it was but here's a couple pictures of the damage thing I want to include in this video is a, is a little uh, story about a mountain man uh, and uh, his worst nightmare. Uh, and the reason I know uh, it's his worst nightmare is because I was the mountain man in the video. This is one scary place. Uh, I'm currently surrounded by SUVs and uh, minivans driven by soccer moms out here in the suburbs. I can't wait to get back to the mountains. Uh, wish me luck, I hope I uh, survive this adventure. Well, we survived, we're out of here, hopefully. 